Hi, good afternoon everyone. Um, thank you for your time today. So before we begin, we'll just be waiting maybe just a few more minutes for the rest of our registrants to come and log in. And then we'll sh start uh, shortly. Rest assured, we will not, uh, we've allotted about an hour, 60 minutes just for this session. And we'll try to keep it within that. Okay, so thank you and uh, see you in a few minutes again. Thank you. Okay, just uh, maybe a minute, uh, one more minute, then we can start. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you once again, you know, for taking the time today to be with us. And um, we'll just be discussing very simply about hospital hospitality technology. Is it, you know, costing you money or is it helping you earn more? And uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Nancy. I'm the business development manager from STA. Okay, so... Um, a little bit of housekeeping for everyone, uh, just to keep the flow smoothly. Um, all participants have been muted upon joining, and uh, if you have, if you do have questions, of course we're open to answering them. We have a Q&A session at the end of the discussion. We'll make sure to have time to answer them, and please close all your tabs on your web browser because sometimes you know they take up speed and maybe internet uh, consumption. You might not hear us properly if you have them on. Okay. So, uh, just about STA, we uh, we are established in Auckland, New Zealand back in 2008. With just one property back then, now we have 10,000 uh, globally, over 90 countries and 8 offices worldwide. And um, our ecosystem is, we help our hotel partners improve online um, their online revenues by through our channel manager, our booking engine, our online reputation manager. We even have an online gift voucher service. Okay, so again, I'm Nancy from STA. Um, 
been with the industry for 15 plus years so please don't come count backwards to get my age so and i i actually started with the hotel so hotel sales ako before then i moved to the hospitality tech side i'm a mom of a four-year-old boy na naga attend ng actong virtual preschool so can you just imagine yung pasensya ko more sa kanya kaysa sa trabaho right now Okay, so um, to start off, again, I'd like to introduce our panel today. Let me begin with this person who has 20 years of expert industry expert. Ms. Jennifer San Victoria serves as the Director of Global Marketing and Brand Development of CG Hospitality Group and the Group Director of Sales and Marketing for a, the multi-awarded eco-luxury holistic medical wellness resort of the farm at San Benito. She was very instrumental in pivoting the farm's business during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to the immediate recovery and success after safely reopening Eto since May 2020. Last year pa, they've kept open. And during the lockdown, she discovered that you always have to be willing to adapt to change, be the first mover, look at the opportunities and positive ways to address the challenges brought about the pandemic. And when she's not busy doing all that, she loves watching documentaries, Star Wars fan, and she's the proud her parent to a poodle named Cooper. And through to being a hospitality expert by heart, she keeps busy by her quest for excellence and determination to stay ahead of the game. Getting positive testimonials and loyalty of guests are her stress relievers. So, Miss Jen, just you know, a few words for everyone. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you so much, Nancy and Tista. And uh, I am very honored and privileged to be part of the panelists, including um, Nico and, and Christian. And we hope that we're able to give our collective insights and best practices to help the industry uh, recover and succeed, you know, despite the pandemic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Jen. And another fair parent, actually, is Sir Nico. Ito, six si Chu si ang kinagata mo ba pronunciations si Chu ang kanyang inaalagaan ngayon Aniam so uh, Sir Nico Australia is the Director of Sales and Marketing of the luxurious The Lind Hotel in Barakay while running such a big property Sir Nico kept himself balanced by right running in uh, with a healthy dose of prayer but watching his favorite shows like Friends and movies like um, relate back to Sapmata and Bridesmaids while eating spaghetti, cheese, and syempre, let's not forget about the wine on the side shirt to keep him stress-free. And during the lockdown, he actually discovered, the Pastor Nico, that you are an ambivert. So, he used to think that he's an extrovert like any of us, pero because of, you know, his work in sales, it made him realize na he wasn't really all that. But he likes, uh, he enjoys being alone and he found himself thriving in his own space. Alam mo, sir, totoo yan. Kasi ako din, I realized that when I was in sales, iba, iba yung lumalabas na personality, right? So, um, if you'd like to say a few words to our audience, sir, Nico? Yeah, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, Miss Nancy and the STA team for inviting us. And like what uh, Jen said a while ago, I hope we will be able to share some insights on the topic for today. Thank you, sir. And last but not the least, another friend's fan. Ayan, taro kayo ni Sir Nico. Sir Christian is also a friend's fan and he is the Senior Market Manager for Traveloka. He's been with the industry for 10 years and of course he's with our industry. He tries to do what he can to support it. He travels as much as he can as well even during the pandemic to, to, to support our local uh, tourism and he regularly works out to maintain physical and mental uh, mentally healthy especially now because it's very important and but aside from being able to conquer working from home and staying from home for months on end he discovered that he has a green thumb sir kasama ka na ba sa mga plantito dyan? so thank you sir christian anything to say for the rest of us Hi everyone, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here to participate in this discussion. Na hopefully nga makatulong sa hotel partners. And yeah, thanks Ta for having me as well as one of your speakers. Okay, sir, thank you very much. Um, so again, our topic is um, again, let me focus it on all of us now. So our topic is hospitality technology. Have you assessed your system? Is it costing you money or is it actually 
helping you earn more is the profit center. So right now, 2021 is ending. Ang bilis. So we're entering 2022. Pero before that, you know, still a lot of properties, a lot of hotels and resorts are still struggling. They're still trying to find their way on how to go about, you know, uh, this situation that we have now. Pero with the slowly easing of travel, I hope that you know our Christmas will be better, especially 2022 will be much better. But when when a hotel or a resort opens, it's not just the lobby, it's not just the rooms that you have to clean. You have to check your systems, your technology, um, and hospitality being a technology or a, sorry, not a technology, but it's a people industry. First thing you 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 know of is the people, but technology because technology is always considered as a premium it has a cost so for for everyone na struggling right now ang una nilang iisipin is to cut down the cost which is technology but is it really the right angle for them right and technology has become so advanced that sometimes even if you don't have it you you might be losing uh, something you might not be getting ahead of your competitor so natanggal lang ka ng expense pero wala wala ka naman napuntahan di ba so Ano ba? What, what's the goal of the hotel, of every property? Diba? It's revenue, it's more importantly profit. So, ngayon, with everyone here, our industry experts will share their practice, best practices, what gets them ahead, and what should you do uh, during this time. First up, si Sir Nico. With Boracay being closed on and off, some properties, yun, ganun. Have, they decided not to be open pa rin. But what are, what are the considerations? Diba? Should they have uh, keep their uh, online listing uh, their website dapat ba bukas siya dapat ba you know updated even the social media and doing all those does it have a cost for uh, any property or any hotel okay so that question is really very tricky for most of the properties no? um, given the situation right now so you have to weigh the pros and cons whether to decide to open or remain open or not. So one of the pros or advantages would be, you know, every centavo counts during these challenging times. And number one, you will have a chance to secure more business opportunities that can somehow help sustain the lifeline of your business. That's number one. And then um, uh, number two, by being open, um, visibility in the market is quite important. No? That's the number two reason why we, why you should uh, think of opening up. Uh, and uh, by being open, you are keeping your brands visible and becomes top of mind when the market or guests are ready to travel. Of course, we go on the other side. There are disadvantages also. Um, number one, um, disadvantages would be mainly due to operational cost. And of course, all of us would have to make an evaluation if staying open will make the company lose more money than being closed. Uh, this will also depend on the creativity and the financial capacity of the company. So there, and a while ago, Nancy, you asked, now, is it worth keeping their online listing even when they are closed? Of course, um, we at the Lind, or personally also, as uh, the marketing in charge of the Lind, uh, I mentioned that uh, visibility is very important, especially in a very competitive market arena. And for me, you know, it's useless even if you have the best product, the best service, if nobody knows you and nobody can remember you. So I think it's very important to have your online listing um, open. And then that goes hand in hand with uh, keeping the website open also. Definitely, everybody, you know, right now in this kind of age, uh, our website becomes our identity. So if you have no website, because natural na for all of us, when you want to research on something, you go to internet. And then even the smallest, I think, Karenderia or like small businesses, they now have like, even if they don't have a, a website, they have a Facebook page or anything that will be um, a representation of their company and uh, 
digital world. So everyone nowadays Googles everything, no? So there. And then, um, it's very important also uh, to keep your social media pages um, up and running. Always post something. Um, there, it all goes back to your visibility. And is there a cost uh, relating to this or is there any benefits? Definitely, you know, um, nothing is free in this world anymore. Um, everything has costs. But we have to think of um, that investment that would, um, if, if it's worth investing. Uh, however, the benefits outweigh the cost in the end once you get more sales. All right. Thank you, Sir Nico. Very true point. Kasi nga naman, even how beautiful the property is, if there's no way of anyone knowing where you are, what you are, diba? then how? Diba? People can travel freely now as before. Diba? Word of mouth sometimes is not enough anymore. Diba? But on the other way around, uh, on the other side, uh, to Miss Jen, for them, like the farm mom, you have kept open as in, I've, I've seen your reports ma'am, <laughs> you've kept open talaga, but how did you manage to keep open? Um, what helped you mm. get your message across while everyone's shutting down, but you're open and mm. is there like a cost on on everything that you did to make sure that you just kept open? Okay, so um, first and foremost, the pandemic has given rise to the conscious and con cautious consumers. So health, safety, and sanitation became the top priority of any traveler. And um, here at the farm, we were able to secure um, to keep our safe haven and healing sanctuary COVID free, thereby earning the trust and confidence of the public. And this has led to our immediate success since reopening in May of 2020. So how did we do this? So we invested heavily on the our safety protocols. So we established or we put up in an on-site COVID testing center and not everyone has done this. And I think this has really catapulted, you know, the farm to immediate success because of, uh, again, going back, the trust and confidence is very important. And so having the on-site COVID testing center, all the guests are required to undergo antigen nasal swab. And we also offer RT-PCR on-site. And this is administered by medical doctors and licensed health professionals. Our employees are tested regularly. In fact, we're tested twice a week, even though we're fully vaccinated. Um, and uh, in addition, we have iChroma. This is an immunoanalyzer diagnostic tool that determines the level of antibodies in the system. So having said that, what our approach is multimodal. So vaccination is not the only key. There are ways to determine and to diagnose whether your antibody is high, and that is your defense against COVID. So in addition to that, the farm is open. We have a, a you know, a beautiful environment and rich microbiome ecology that is protecting um you know uh, you know our, our, our beautiful sanctuary um however we have imported um some products that um, eliminate uh proven to eliminate covid in all enclosed um indoor spaces like the guest rooms and treatment rooms we completely sanitize it and we have again invested on products um, from spain and from israel that are proven to kill or eliminate um, coronavirus on any surface or crevices and in the air effectively so i can say that and confidently say that the farm um, has the highest excellence in terms of safety and sanity uh, sanitation and hygiene protocols. In fact, um, the heating hotels of the world in Germany has recognized our efforts. It's not only, um, you know, safety protocols uh, against COVID, but our mission to heal on a holistic level. So aside from the safety uh, travels received from the Department of Tourism and safe travels from the WTTC, we also received a recognition from the Healing Hotels of the World, um, giving us, you know, the confidence and again, a boost to, uh, um, you know, to inform the public that we're a totally safe and COVID-free environment. So how did we communicate this to the public? So we used a multi-channel and multi-device strategy um, what we did was uh, leveraged on social media 
And again, it's a free platform. What really made us, I think, um, uh, successful in, in communicating this is that we used guest testimonials. And a lot of our guests are high profile celebrities. I'm sure you've seen this in the social media. We have um, influential people and bloggers who have uh, a vlog their stay and it's visible on YouTube. And just to let you know, they are paying guests. So we basically just leveraged on their platforms. And these are all authentic testimonials. It is not paid. It is not sponsored. So I guess people also, of course, they believe that because it is a uh, you know, genuine um, experience of having um, immersed into healthy lifestyle. And the farm was also relevant during this time because we've kept our um, purpose-driven mission, and that is to provide life transformative healing holidays. And on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, people are more conscious and cautious of the brands. And I'm proud to say that the farm is an eco-sustainable, um, responsible business uh, and that we promote responsible travel. So, I mean, the, all these elements were, were communicated through our digital platforms. We also leveraged on YouTube. Uh, we made use of YouTube as an e-learning platform. So there, if you um, check our YouTube channel, we have uh, um, doctors uh, recommending health tips during this pandemic. We did a lot of um, uh, cooking shows. And in this cooking shows, we, used, we made use of the local ingredients. So that's promoting what is local, what is nutritious, what is clean and green food that will naturally boost your immune system, that will naturally um, heal your gut because gut health is equivalent to mental health and that was also pre pre prevalent during the pandemic people who are um, have anxiety and stress also our health uh, professionals and our doctors did a lot of uh, webinars and we were invited by several platforms both local and international to give um, again you know educate uh, education through the pandemic and um, even the Department of Tourism has invited our doctors as expert speakers uh, during this time. So uh, again, going back, it's making use of the digital platforms. It's multi-channel and multi-device to communicate um, our offerings and most importantly, gaining trust and confidence and being relevant during this time. So messaging and content is very key. It's really key. It's, it's as important as the tool that you use. Uh, you have to be able to capture the hearts, the minds, and the emotions of uh, the public. And there has to be a purpose. There has to be a deeper connection why they should go out and travel and choose you. You know? So yeah. basically, that's it. Thank you, Miss Jen. Really, because Thank you. it seems that there really is a lot of effort in doing that. But it was successful because you've proven it. You put so much effort, yet it paid back. So hmm. there are ways it, it can be free, it could be paid. Like yes. said, what, yes. what is digital marketing sometimes is not uh, free. But hmm. on your end, yeah. there are other ways for you to yes. do it. Yeah. Still, you cannot do that without using those channels. Diba? So yeah. thank, yes. thank you for that. Really is thank the you. effort yeah, to yes. do that. And to Sir Christian, for us, like like you and me, we're on the other side. We're not properties, but we're service providers. Um, if hotels and resorts, they're doing these things, they're assessing their um their, their properties their, and then everything. Pero, what do we do? Like in your in your uh, company, how do you make sure that they keep their listing on top, even when they're closed? Or any any tips for them? And dapat ba they should have reactivated their online uh, listing even prior or even when they're closed? How, how is this? Uh, and then is it costing them any money? Because when they think that they're probably listed somewhere, they might think you know that they have to pay. Pero how is it po ba talaga? Yes. So as Nico and Jen mentioned earlier, visibility is very important, especially right now. So we all know that from time to time, yung community quarantine status talaga nagbabago, di ba? It's, it's very uncertain. But for me, it's also important to be available and visible. So what we can do is for those states that are uncertain, you can just make the cancellation policy flexible, meaning you can create um, refundable rate plan so that if ever na there would be a lockdown, the 
cancellation process would also be easy for both the travelers and also the properties. And then when it comes to the deactivation, for me, there's no need to deactivate the listing actually unless the property is being considered na to be sold or to be closed. But otherwise, you can just apply close out dates for those dates na hindi mag operate yung property. Yeah. And then when it comes to the cost, well, the good thing with OT is that you only pay commission if there would be a confirmed booking. So, um, ayun. So, I guess if magiging visible lang naman and magkakaroon ng listing, um, there wouldn't be really additional cost unless you get a confirmed booking with us. Alright. So, basically, it's free marketing at the end of the day for them, right? Just to keep Correct. the listing um, on on it. So, thank you very yes. much, sir. Christian, so it's a common consensus that dapat we have to be relevant, we have to be updated, and how do we do that? We have to keep our channels open, simply social media, websites, you know, you have to have a functional website to keep it open as a, an updated social media, maybe a boost here and there to get your brand across and, you know, make sure your terms are flexible, especially in how our, you know, travel guidelines are consistently changing. So we make sure to adapt to them also because we have to be uh, kumbaga, it's, it has to be convenient for the guests. We make it convenient for them also. And let me go back to uh, Miss Jen. During the period, I know you did not close, pero uh, did you make any other improvements aside from getting you know systems that will help you clean the property? But um, did you do any improvements on the hotel, on the people, on the technology also? Pero where did you strike the balance and um, all the other systems that you have, did you make time to assess all of them? I mean, nung ginawa niyo yun, was there any cost or any more benefits mm. that you do? Yeah. Okay, so guest um, excellence and um, guest service experience is the heart and soul of every hospitality business. So we invested in both people and technology. So first and foremost, we have ongoing trainings and continuous learning and development of our employees. And we believe that this supports, um, you know, their, their performance, it will boost our confidence, boost the productivity, reduce um, employee turnover and improve the company culture. So first and foremost, the investment should be the people because they are, you know, the ones um, actually uh, I would say the heart and soul of the business. And in order for them to provide excellent customer service, excellent customer care, because at the end of the day, what we want our, you know, our guests to come back, we want them to be loyal. We want them to um, recommend and bring their loved ones. And that we've seen, we've, you know, tripled, quadrupled the loyal guests, repeat business every month, every two months they come back. In terms of loyalty, we've had guests who have stayed with us for many, many months, up to more than a year. So I've never seen this kind of, you know, I mean, like business pre-pandemic. So they've, they've uh, used the farm as their second home. And again, going back to technology, I'd like to add on that we pioneered wellness workation. And in fact, the Department of Tourism is using us as a benchmark for this um, for our success in making the farm a successful business model for wellness workation because um, with our free Wi-Fi access, free IT um, assistance, plus they have uh, guests have access to our doctors and um, um, integrative medical doctors and licensed health professionals, um, plus they have wellness activities and nutritious food that will boost their uh, productivity, you know, mental clarity, and um, they will they can work more efficiently in a beautiful environment and safe environment like this. So um, aside from you know, so that became a profit for us, leveraging on the technology that we're using. Um, another technology that we used um, is the the, the uh, mobile app, and which served as a digital pocket concierge because there are still some guests who are kind of conscious and they prefer. Um, not to engage face to face, but to communicate using the mobile app. So that has been beneficial. So that not only, um, you know, without sacrificing guest service or guest satisfaction, we're able to communicate with them. Plus this mobile app helped us also promote our offerings. So there's also a return. So again, it's an investment. This technology is for me, I consider it as an investment and not an expense because there's a return on investment. There's profit, you know, uh, it's profitable. Uh, you know, at the end of the day. So uh, basically, we also um, partnered with all the mobile app that provides cashless transactions. 
So that has also increased the number of, of uh, direct bookings uh, through cashless transaction. And there are a lot of mobile apps now that offer that. So again, it's both technology and people. We've invested in both, and that has proven to be beneficial. And the returns is uh, thousand times fold. All right. So with you, ma'am, it's it's nice to hear that the investment comes comes in immediately. You yes. can see it, right? It so, was it was immediate. It was really immediate. That's great. I think the the um, the success factor there is that even during that time that everything was closed up closed down we were already thinking of ways how to reopen and that's why we were able to reopen safely responsibly with utmost care and we have not closed ever since we remained open all yes. throughout since may of 2020 and the first hospitality business to reopen early um, in the country and probably the first to reopen in the world all right ma'am that's good to know because the for some they they don't want it's not that they don't want to try maybe they're not they don't know how to so thank you for sharing you know ideas like they have to be adaptable to what should happen Change. what should yes do. yes not because everything closed down well na. you're just yes yes right? i think also looking at opportunities because the thing is there's always an opportunity even through the challenges and through mm -hmm. the pandemic it's one way of um i think the, the trait that i'm i'm i would like to say is the tenacity the adaptability mm -hmm. the willingness to change the willingness to take calculated risk because it was a risk right. for us uh, to do all of this but it has uh, benefited us in, you know uh, in the long run <laughs> and i can i can imagine how much it should it could you know you spent it, it it sounds pricey but the it's way actually it, yeah it's very minimal and come to think of it because the returns is like a thousand not even a hundred it's a thousand times four wow, so again gaining trust and confidence and this is what i would like to reiterate if even if again i have to say even if people are fully vaccinated and we have the diagnostic tool to check whether you have high antibodies you cannot really say so mm -hmm. it has to be a multimodal approach and we don't right. rely on just full vaccination so we do the testing we do diagnostics and we still continue to disinfect mm -hmm. and have really invested on um you know uh, technology in mm -hmm. order to make sure that our our property is completely completely covid free thank you mr jen thank you and, uh, going to sir nico again eh, sir nico sorry sir christian sayo muna. um on our end us being again on the other side see miss jenny was she was able to instill confidence through their guests because of you know things that they tried things that they explored upon how they got their message across pero us for um on the other side how how can we help them you know get that confidence and how to instill confidence to our partner hotels to to sign like in your case to sign up with you and does it have really to do with you know so much technology or so much investment um on the end did you change something in the way traveloka works Yung algorithm ba yon masyadong technical yan, pero did you change something or how did you assess uh, your system to cater to you know properties now yeah well, from time to time, we updated our partners on the things that they can do to handle certain cases and to remain visible at this time. And um, we also did a study, and based on that study, actually, yun nga, nakita naman na cleanliness is very important at this time. And this gen has talked about this a while ago. That's why we've also partnered with the Department of Tourism to launch the Clean Accommodation Program. So with this program, we highlight those properties that have been accredited by the DOT to operate. So in that way, the guest can easily know which properties are safe to stay at and which properties follow the guidelines and protocols set by the Department of Tourism. So that's um, what we have done. Well, when it comes to the strategies um, at the time of the pandemic, well, we've added more products. We all know that um, COVID testing is required for certain destinations. So we have antigen and um, RT-PCR. You can book that using our experience funnel through our application. Um, we also added more information. So to our app, you can inform the customers about the requirements because we all know in the Philippines for LGU, iba iba yung requirements, iba like the COVID testing or the med cert or um, yeah, the requirements vary for LGU. So you can just specify that through your page, through your listing. You can just communicate with your market manager to ensure that you're able to deliver that message if you're a quarantine hotel or if you're a multi 
uh, multiple use property. So you can do that with your OTA partner. Yeah. Sorry, just to share also, recently we've been busy with some campaigns. We we saw that diba, for the past few months, the mega sales campaigns have grown, especially with e-commerce companies like Shopee and Lazada. I'm sure you've bought during mga 8877. So we're also doing that right now. Um, we're also doing um, 1111 PD sales to help also the partners to recover at this time. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Sir Christian. So basically, Again, going back to uh, what you said a while ago, having list having a listing, it's not really costing them much. It's more return. Pero with the listing, they can actually join those your program, the ba? You know those clean uh, accommodation program. So yeah, maybe they're limited on funds right now. They cannot get uh, their website up. Pero with the listing, Correct. they can actually get their message across, the ba? The, they're they're open or they're certified. And that's that's what's important. If people want to travel, they want to know where and how to travel. Yeah. So especially if their budget is limited at this time, actually OTs can help them market their properties. Exactly. Even not all properties, someone would have the budget to really spend to get influencers mm-hmm. or to really, um, yeah, to spend when it mm-hmm. comes to SEM or SEO. So the good thing with OTs, is we actually do the work to help the properties become visible through SEM, Google searches, Google ads, and things like those. Great, great to uh, to mention that also, and and for some also, just to plug it in, like like what you said, uh, you, you can get maybe more visibility on the Google searches with Star with our booking engine. Also, if they want to get listed on Get Google, then you know we can do it for them, minimal cost. But then, like we've heard, eh, when you're listed, when you're relevant, when you you stay updated, sometimes it comes back more with you know more benefit at the end, more sales, kumbaga. and then. Um, for you, sir Nico, um, let me go back to you. And you see, re- technology played a big part on really being relevant. But you, you, you mentioned that. Pero how do you maintain it? How do you stay relevant? Did you assess what you had uh, with with Lin? Ko ano meron kayo at that moment? Uh, did you assess all the systems that you had? And is it? You mentioned also a while ago that uh, boost or digital marketing may have a cost. But in your opinion is it worth it to to do that um uh, what are the costs and benefits of it if you can share yeah of course um well definitely you know uh technology has played a big part on being relevant as we all know technology is now an integral part of our lives we cannot avoid it um it's really part of our everyday activities um everyone has a smartphone and we conduct our day-to-day activities through Technology. We shop, we order food, buy groceries, we send money, pay bills online, and we also consume entertainment, news, and information through different platforms and applications. So it means everyone, or majority of the consumers, are using technologies. And definitely, for the Lin, for us to stay relevant, we made sure our presence is maintained on these channels. You no, know, not just uh, um, with Facebook, with Instagram, our website. Another thing that um, we did was since um, you have to be present in the in all these uh, platforms and channels, we have to be updated and always be uh, be aware of what's happening, what's the trend, what we did during right even before the start of the pandemic. It's just a coincidence, but we did a revamp of our website. And uh, if you guys have a chance to visit our website, we updated it in such a way that it's uh, uh, more interactive. It's like, it's a magazine type of website. So um, the previous website that we had is not, is also very good, is very beautiful. But the, the reason why we updated it is because we want to always keep on changing and make our audience uh, be interested and engaged all the time. Another thing, like what uh, Jen mentioned a while ago, um, we we utilized and um, take advan- uh, took advantage of both our celebrities and influencers who have stayed with us and the technology that they are using. Um, I would also like to say, um, same with the farm, um, 
all our celebrities and uh, influencers were not paid. We believe at the Lind, you know, the best way to to market or to communicate um, your product is through word of mouth. And um, we want it to be organic. We believe that if you have a very good product and uh, and we are confident that we have one, that it will naturally be uh, promoted by those who stays with us. Not just celebrities, everyone. Like, um, do, 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 you, do you believe that, Nancy, you are also an influencer? Even if you're not a celebrity, your reach within your group is, um, you, you don't know the impact of that, how um, you say a, a good word about a, a product you've tried. That's how, or how, how, how a certain product becomes popular. It's the organic uh, um, approach that it makes something uh, quite popular. And then, um, how did we assess the systems? Of course, through productivity and sales conversion. Um, so through this, um, may, may I go back lang to the celebrities now? So, of course, these uh, influencers, they have they have been using um, the traditional or the the applications that are known for like Instagram, Facebook. But with us, we haven't touched on TikTok, for example. But these these guests have been um, exploring this for quite a time now. So um, there. So in TikTok, we also have um, exposure with this. And then going back and how we are assessing the systems, of course, through productivity and sales conversion. Um, when we look into like a certain technology or app, we measure, is this making our lives easier? Is this um, eliminating some of the tasks that would, a, a, a certain employee or a staff member would be, you know, doing uh, multiple times? If the answer is yes, uh, it it helps you, then I think the system is quite effective. And when it uh, when we talk about the cost, um, I would say definitely it's worth it because if you can increase the sales and your productivity. Um, that's already something parang bawi ka na kagad, di ba? And um, the, I think that that's about it. Um, you really have to identify the correct product or system of technology that you have to use. Alright. Thank you, Sir Nico. And very simply, uh, the message was you have to stay relevant. Again, we, we're going back to staying relevant. How do you do it? How do you do this? Your platforms are open. You know, you explore different platforms. May website na nga kayo. You already have that website. Yet you decide to to evolve it, de ba? You, you put an effort in changing it. And again, with the OTA listing, Traveloka, they did just they did not stop on just having a listing for the hotel. Pero they created programs which help you know us uh, other. Not us, me being a, a civilian na magbubuk, I can see the benefit of having those um, programs. I can get, you know, what messaging the hotel is giving out. For the farm, really this uh, contactless um, approach that they have, even if very isolated na in the farm, very safe, pero may, eh, mayroon pa silang contactless effort, di ba? So, really, those uh, things that you did, it has, a, the, the technology backing it up actually provided you the benefits tenfold. So, you know, it's um, sometimes you can't quantify it. You know, exposures, the, there's no really, the exposure is getting bigger and bigger. So, you can't get sales. But the branding itself, you're getting your message across. Eh. Yes, sir, Nico, you're about yes? Yeah, if I just may add lang. No? So, we talked about how to utilize or effectively uh, take advantage of these technologies. Uh, so all of us right now is in this uh, very challenging time, the, the pandemic, and everyone should be able to convey the message of how safe and how you are very, um, how you are following um, the the standards, the safety standards set by the government and the World Travel and Tourism Co uh, Council. But how do you convey that if nobody knows about your efforts and your um, initiatives it's useless okay. so um yeah so that's one of the reasons why we regularly keep our websites our social media platforms updated 
with all the announcements and through our guests they also are quite aware and they naturally organically post it in their social media also right. to share how safe and how um, we are compliant with uh, all these things correct correct thank you sir and um just now um we i have posted a link in our chat if you know uh, any of our audience are interested to see how they can leverage on their social media for sta we have a blog about it so please do uh, subscribe to our blog or just in the chat right now there's a link about social media trends that uh, you can do or use and really follow what Miss Jen and Sir Nico was doing, you know, try to change, try to see what's new and adapt to it. All right. So uh, before we go to the last part of our session, just a little bit of icebreaker for everyone. So let's do a bit of fast talk. Um, if you guys are familiar, I have a few choices here. Really, um, sabihin nyo lang what you prefer out of those items that I will say randomly. Sir Christian, you're the first one mic on there okay so which do you prefer for alcohol is it wine beer or hard liquor um, beer okay and okay. dining out fine dining or buffet fine dining probably okay and if the international travel opens up you see no restriction whatever country where will you go first australia to visit my family there yeah. oh Ako din, sir, pero for vacation. Sana. Um, more than two years na eh. <laughs> oh, tagal. Okay. For pets, sir, I know in your area you're not allowed to have pets. Pero if you have pets, are you a dog, a cat, or a fish, or, you know, others? I'm a dog person. Oh, lahat tayo. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Miss Jen, for you, for vacation, are you more into culture, city life, or beach? Ay, oh no, the internet of Miss Jen. I think, naga, yeah, Miss Jen? Can you Hi. hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Are you more into the city for vacation? Are you more into culture, city life, or beach? Oh, okay. Well, in terms of vacation, as long as it meets my values, because I uh, support responsible travel. And okay. then I would like to have a vacation that is regenerative, meaning something that would give me a life-changing um, and authentic experience that would better me as a human being or better me as a person. So when I come back, I have a new perspective that is a positive change. <laughs> Any vacation. Eat, eat, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> eat, pray, love. <laughs> Correct. Besides travel, when everything mm -hmm. opens up, lahat na ng businesses opens up, um, leisure type, whatever, what's the first thing you will do? I want to, of course, reconnect with my loved ones. Oh, <laughs> I've been here in a bubble at the farm. I'm not complaining, but it's just that, um, of course, you, you, same as everybody else, I'm sure you would want to reconnect with your loved ones of face course, to face. Understandable. Mm -hmm. So, um, besides uh, Christian Plantito, are you a Plantito, Plantita, or a minimalist? What, what design or what uh, aspect are you in that spectrum? Uh, Miss Chen, did you hear me? Oh, sorry, me. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I would go for biophilic design. It's biophilic okay. design is something that brings the outdoors in. And so there's also oh. a study that shows that basically it's living things. So there's also a study that shows that if you do have living things in your indoor spaces, it can help with your mental, psychological well being. Oh. So it's biophilic design. That's also the in thing now in um, architecture. Bringing the outdoors in. Ah, okay. Sige ma, ma-check out nga yan. And <laughs> when the travel domestically fully open, as in no restrictions, sa kapupunta na? You know, I want to visit a place that has, again, that meets my values. I really support ah, responsible, okay. responsible tourism and also businesses and maybe destinations that protect the environment, preserve the environment, and also support the local community because that's very okay. important. So again, a socially responsible uh, business and uh, tourism. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Jen. And last, Sir Nico, for you, um, for a Filipino dish, uh, where is the best location? Where is it? Uh, like, Sibulechon ba? Sisig ba in Pampanga? Durian in down south? Or Longganisa sa north? What's uh, your choice? I think Durian from 
in Davao. Talaga. Okay, and then, what will you splurge on? Bag, shoes, gadgets, travel? Uh, gadgets. <laughs> oh, okay. Baka may iPhone ka na ba yung bago, sir? Kaka-out lang. <laughs> Wala ka. Pinag-ipunan ko pa. <laughs> oh, mahal. <laughs> mahal so, oh, binge watching on Netflix, are you into TV series, documentaries, or movies? Uh, TV series. Okay. And, obviously, are you Android or Apple, iOS? Apple, no? Apple, uh, uh, Apple iOS. Ayan. So, you know, with with these simple questions, we get to know more about you guys. So, thank you for uh, sharing us. Pero it's also like what me, Sir Nico said, you know, when you're choosing Android or Apple, sometimes you're not choosing because of how much is it, some, diba? It, it's a, if you choose sometimes Apple, alam na natin, it's much more expensive than every, everything else, even yeah. if the lower version. But it's the benefit that you have. It's it's same with technology, diba? So, that's a technolo- that's technology basically, but we don't look at the cost, but more on the benefits. So, with Sir Christian, how how fast is the return of investment for having an OTA listing? Yeah. Well, when it comes to the return or profit, that would really depend on the strategies of the property. So, there are many factors that can affect the profitability. Um, the ranking, of course, the guest reviews, the company may experience on guest mismo, and many other factors in the revenue management, like pricing. Of course, you need to ensure that your pricing is okay. You need to monitor your competitors as well. And also to ensure availability. Siyempre, kung wala kang available rooms online, there wouldn't be any transactions. So you need to ensure that your rooms are always available, especially kung sure ka naman operational yung property mo. And then, um, content also is very important. You need to ensure that through your photos, to your facilities, amenities, you're able to inform the customers kung ano yung value na nakukuha nila if they would book your property. So, it's important for you to inform them about the requirements, about the notices nga that I mentioned earlier and um, the other restrictions. Also, um, even photos are very important then for them to have an idea kung ano yung itsura ng room na i-avail nila to ensure na halos lahat ng even bathroom is important for some people diba? sometimes akala nila okay na room photo but even bathroom it's also being checked by some app users so yeah those things um, kailangan talaga i-monitor to ensure that they would get um, transactions through their OTA partners okay so sir thank you very much and then um, for you Miss Jen it's not really just about increasing or maximizing your profits diba but how did you manage to do this um, with the right technology? Ba? Did you use, um, how did you balance getting uh, direct bookings and mm. OTA bookings? Yeah, what, what channels did you use to make sure that you get the most out of it? Okay, going back to, you know, um, overall, I would say financial profitability, each and every one in the company, um, all the heads of department, it's not only the sales and marketing, not only the general manager, not only finance, but literally everyone in the company is involved in controlling cost, increasing revenue to achieve healthy profits. And for us, technology is means efficient, uh, drives efficiency. And um, uh, that's why, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we use multimodal channels and multi-devices and we were able to prove this uh, and it has become really profitable for our business. Um, in terms of, of direct bookings, of course, you have to choose the right partners like Staa, of course, and you need to have a seamless booking experience, real-time availability, dependable payment um, uh, gateway, those are instant confirmation because people right now with all these gadgets, they want instant response. They're very... Uh, they're impatient <laughs> but that's how it is right now you need to be instant instant confirmation it has to be right. hassle free and that's why we have both direct and ota with ota uh, partners it gives you like um, it gives us different online channel channels meaning to say more options for our guests to choose from so it's again going back to what is convenient because there are some guests we prefer to book um, with ota and um you know the most important important thing is also to monitor the performance and this is how you can also invest on what strategies and how to um, leverage on on that platform so again multi-channel i think would be ideal and, and i have to say you know some of our 
um, travel and hospitality stakeholders. Um, and for while the farm was able to achieve healthy profits, we did not drop our rates. In fact, right now we're charging peak rates. We're charging uh, no <laughs> high season <laughs> rates. I know, but again, I have to say you have to communicate the benefits. It has right, to be right. benefits driven. And in fact, what we've done is we've added a lot of freebies that is included in the room rate. And what again I go back is trust and confidence. Everyone who will know the type of uh, I would say effort and investment that we put mm -hmm. in will really come to the farm because of the trust and confidence is number one is key and with the room rate of the farm it comes all the activities you know sound healing you have three times yoga you have functional fitness you have a health consult with live blood analysis so these are um, activities or add-ons that you cannot get elsewhere so what we capitalized on is like the unique value and what they're doing is, is, you know, it's really value for money. It has to be value driven. It has to be benefits driven. And again, if you will check our rates, all our high uh, season and even peak period rates that we're charging right now. So, and that's why we were able to recover immediately. We did not drop our rates. All right. Mm -hmm. Actually, mom, when you mention your high rates, there is this uh, branding that they expect that already for you. From yes, you. the so expectation is really high. Yeah. yeah. Well, premium establish that. That's yes, good. yes, and that's why that equates to premium service, and that's why mm -hmm. we had to also do continuous training to make sure that there are absolutely no complaints. First and foremost, mm -hmm. secondly, is excellent customer service, and we want them to post their testimonials, and we're using all these testimonials. We're reposting it, and that's one way again of of uh, free advertising is <laughs> is uh, positive testimonials and and life changing. Uh, how to go testimonials from all of our guests. All right. mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. And for the last question to Sir Nico, another property like you, you've established that the land is not cheap, diba? but but you've made that effort. You, there's a, a branding in that. But do you think that uh, no, uh, with the technology now, it's always evolving. Do you think that properties, big or small, resorts, hotels, should they invest now? Even if they're still closed or, or trying to open, but they have to invest now. And do you think it will get them ahead of the competitor? Even if they will, knowing that they will spend some money on it. And, and you know, a lot of hotels that I've talked to, they don't want to open um, because of the limited travel. But um, yeah, because you, you, you tried to open and you've invested on, on something. And so, what what should they do? I mean, if they don't open now, how can they get their future bookings? The back? Can you share something on that? Well, number one, we remained open also, mm -hmm. um, except for those times that uh, it's the government, uh, yeah, the government mandated ones, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, whenever we had the chance, we really decided to to remain open. I would say that if one has the resources, it's better to act now and invest and stay ahead of the competition by investing in systems that will increase their productivity and revenue for the company. Mm -hmm. Again, depending on the financial capabilities of the company, uh, I really believe no, sa akin, it is wise that if they can allocate and invest in technologies like STAA, no? Kami, we are... Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We use STAA. So, uh, that can increase the productivity of the team. So, and especially right now, everyone has made some cost-cutting measures and uh, are currently operating on a lean manning. Investing in the right technology will bring more savings actually in the long run. Right? Yeah, so, that's a very good point. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yeah, and it's definitely advantageous compared to in action, if, compared to not doing anything. So investing is always meant to have a good foresight to improve the future. All right. So, sir, thank you very much. Actually, we're now going to um, our Q and A portion. Uh, si ambiles de ba? So brang ambiles. So uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Actually, we have one question here. Um, for for you guys, um, from Mr. Francis De Leon, what is the profit or revenue distribution percentage of room bookings derived from technology, particularly with OTA uh, listing? versus direct bookings via website in your properties? Sir, 
So anyone first would like to take on that? Percentage? Mm. It's just a percentage, not a rough estimate. Okay, um, can I answer that? Yes, ma'am. Please. Okay. please well, for our OTA, it's about 30% of the total business. And then 70% are direct bookings. But um, again, it's different channels. These are different channels. Um, some go through straight to our website. Some go through, you know, straight um, um, by through calls or social media. So different again, different channels. But overall, uh, it's only be, it's also because um, the farm is not really a hotel nor a resort. It's a lifestyle brand, and it's not um, we're a medical wellness resort. So the thing is, our offering is so much different from. I would say a uh, beach property or a hotel and there's a lot of information that uh, normally a guest would have before they book a stay with us because what we promote is preventive health care disease prevention we address and treat chronic illnesses and lifestyle diseases so probably what you see on instagram it's nothing not really uh, i would say those are the beautiful environment that you see but the farm is much more deeper than that. What we offer is a healing holiday that is medically supervised, evidence-based, and science-based. So uh, that's why it's a more complicated product. That's why a lot of people would normally call us and they have a lot of questions before they actually book a stay. Okay. In your uh, properties, Renico, anything to share? Um, it's similar with Jen, no? About, uh, we get about 30% from the online business. But um, actually, during the, this time, uh, the the landscape has changed. You no, know? um, the 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 number of direct bookings has increased actually um, because of uh, I think more people are we're catering to local markets right now. So the borders are not yet open to uh, for, to international markets. So. I think most of the locals right now, they still book through OTAs, but a lot of them uh, inquires directly because they have the, the means. No, they can call, they can send an email. It's the the contact details are easily available. Okay, and just to share also on our end because we can see reports from uh, properties who has both channel manager and booking engine. Sometimes it's a fair game actually when they have a very good healthy listing online and they have a very um you know very favorable packages on their direct booking engine i would see the room nights the bookings at par with ota and direct bookings uh, which is good because if you are able to manage to do that you know your your revenues in every channels um will be uh, your profit behind it will be very good if you have a balance uh but also like i've said like they've said sir francis if you're listening it depends on what kind of product you have right so you have to know where you can be profitable is it on your online or direct channels but you know just get started so you can see both the back so i am <laughs> all right so we're at the end of the session thank you very much for everyone let me just share something for the rest of our audience here um i know we talked about a lot of um digital marketing a lot about how your social media how you should do with your social media just check out our blogs our you know uh, sign up with staff a newsletter we have a lot of articles that can help you do it you don't have to be a star property but if you are i'm here to help you also so just sign up and you know we can help you learn a lot and just some few um takes from today's uh discussion um we Make sure that, you know, properties, you stay relevant. Keep your OTA listing um, available. If not now, maybe for future bookings, make sure you have flexible terms. Sign up with programs like the Clean Accommodation Programs of our yeah. Saviloka Partner. Um, and while staying relevant, check your systems uh, as your website working at, up to par. You can get stuff for your website if you like and um, your social media pages simple updates maybe just photos do it make sure you're um, active and again assess your system what works well with you when pre-pandemic or during pandemic or maybe if didn't work at all then maybe it's time to change you know 
And staying relevant sometimes may be costly, but it really is definitely worth it um, in the long run. In the long run, because the cost is justified by good sales, as to quote Sir Nico on that. And with direct bookings, you need to have the right partners to bring in the business. Um, it's important to have, um, like Miss Jen said, seamless uh, transactions, quick, uh, quick confer- confirmation, parang quick turnaround. Because nga, you know, people right now very short attention span, especially on the technology, di ba? They want instant. Ganyan. Meron na agad confirmation, may payment na agad. Um, you can do that with um, Sta again. And technology, basically, it's not. Uh, no, it's not a cost. It's actually investment with long-term profits. It's definitely advantageous compared to in action. To quote again, Sir Nico, and it's always good to have the foresight to invest now, especially for uh, future bookings. So um, that's it, actually, for us here. And I would like to thank our partners, uh, Sir Nico, Miss Jen, Sir Christian, for you know the time today and we hope to have a lot more collaborations in the future we look forward to a better christmas a better 2022 actually for everyone okay you can check out again uh the lind uh in boracay they're open the farm they're open Traveloka, sign up now and please with sta um nancy and again thank you very much for today see you bye everyone bye-bye bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.